Welcome to this video on how to check the pressure in an expansion vessel when it's connected to a Trapex expansion vessel bracket. So let's get on with it and find out exactly what we need to do. Now first of all let's have a look and see what you actually do get with the bracket. So you can see the bracket is designed for expansion vessels from 2 to 25 litres but this expansion vessel does not come with the bracket. This is an 18 litre expansion vessel. But this does come with it. So we have this isolation valve and drain point. And also you can put your filling loop onto there and you can dose inhibitor into there as well. If we look on the top, the first thing there, we come with an air vent. Now you could change that for an automatic air vent if you wanted to. Then we've got a three bar pressure relief valve. And just above there, we've got the pressure gauge. And this pipe round the back here is where the water actually comes in from the heating system. Now, if you wanted to buy one of these, you can buy it from Arctic Hayes for about 42 quid, including the vat. So that's what we get on this Trapex expansion vessel bracket. Now, because of this Trapex expansion vessel has isolation valves, this makes it incredibly easy for us to check what the pressure is on this expansion vessel when we're doing things like a service or a repair. So all we need is a uh, adjustable spanner, but also this cap here. If you wanted to use it on the end of it is the right size for turning these valves off. So the first thing we need to do is put the spanner on here and isolate the vessel from the bracket. So this bracket will keep the same pressure in there. When we come to drain this out and relieve the pressure, we will keep all the pressure in there. So we're not wasting water or our chemicals like our inhibitors. Now, next thing, the bracket actually comes with this connector and the rubber washer. Now the connector can be used for a filling loop if you've got like we've got here a sealed system but we've got a filling loop on uh, another boiler. So just get the washer into there and screw it into the end of here. And it only needs to be hand tight. Next, we need to get a little piece of garden hose or drain down hose. Now, as you can see, I've connected the hose and luckily enough for me, there's a kitchen sink right near this vessel. So I don't even need to go to drain. So all I need to do now is get the spanner at the same and I'm just gonna open this valve now which will relieve the pressure off the vessel. And I'm going to leave that open now because if we do need to put any pressure in this vessel, it will force any of the water out off the top here and put the air into there. Now, I don't really like uh, expansion vessels upside down like this because it keeps pressure on the diaphragm all the time but that's the way it's been designed for a compact design. So we'll just have to put up with it. Now, next thing is I need to check down here at the Schrader valve, what pressure we actually have in this vessel. Now, this is the equipment I'm going to be checking this expansion vessel with. This is actually the Regan Vessel Jet. And all it is is a battery operated <laughs> pump with a digital display here, which is going to tell me how much pressure is in the vessel. So it's reading zero at the moment. So I need to take off the dust cap of the Schrader valve. And I'm going to place this in. Now remember, there's no pressure within this vessel, only the air pressure what's here, because we can't get an accurate reading unless we check it this way. 
Now this gauge is actually telling me there's a pressure in here of 1.75 bar. So for this system, it's way too high. Now the pressures within this vessel will be dependent on the size, the high, the flow temperatures. There's loads of different factors what determine the pressure within here. And everybody seems to think it's between one and one and a half bar. So we're doing some checks on all this and what we've done, we're looking at we need just under one bar. So I need to take some pressure out rather than putting pressure in. So let's get on with doing that then. Now to relieve the pressure, all I've got to do is get rid of the air somehow. So I need a little screwdriver just to poke in there. So here goes, I'm just gonna see what we've got now. Now I've actually got 1.05 bar in here. So not too far away from the one bar. Now if I did want to put some more pressure in here, all basically I've got to do is turn the pump on and increase the pressure. So that's taking the air out or putting the pressure in. But before we actually put the dust cap back on, we need to check and make sure the Schrader valve isn't passing. And the way we do that is just get some leak detection fluid, squirt it, work it into the Schrader valve, Uh, wipe any excess off and we can put our dust cap back on now let's sort out the top so first thing is remove the hose take off our cap and seal, close off the valve, make sure it is off and then open this valve to let the pressure back in. And put the dust cap back on. And now the job is complete. So that's my look at checking expansion vessels when they're fitted to the Trapex expansion vessel bracket. So hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.